Now, I'm delighted now to be joined by one of the world's top experts in generative AI. Um, this expert co-authored the, the paper, Attention is All You Need, which introduced the transformers. And those of you that follow generative AI know that transformers is the groundbreaking neural net architecture that is the foundation of all the generative AI that's out there. So please welcome Aidan Gomez, the CEO of Cohere, to the stage. Hi, Aidan. Hey, Thanks for joining us. Great to be here. So Aidan, sometimes I talk about this AI generative AI, it's kind of like magic. You ask questions and it answers, and he's the magician. He's the guy that does this. <laughs> the guy that invented the magic behind generative AI, or one of the people that, that invented the magic behind. So it's a great pleasure to have you here, Aiden. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your company, Cohere, and, and a little bit about your background also? Yeah, of course. So uh, my co-founders and I, Nick and Ivan, myself, we started the company about four years ago. And before that, I had been at Google Brain, which is Google's AI research lab. And I was part of the team that created the Transformer, which is uh, the backbone of this latest revolution in AI. And what Cohere does is we build two different types of models. So the first type you might be familiar with, uh, thanks to the chatbots that are on the inter internet and available to consumers, it's called generative models. The second type, which was just introduced, are embedding models. And what these do are they, they transform text into vectors, which can then be fed into a vector database. Uh, and yeah, that's us. Yeah, so you're the guy, so he's the guy that takes the image, takes the document, and does the magic to convert it into a vector, which is a bunch of numbers, but not just any numbers, numbers that represent the semantic content of the object. So, okay, so that's great. So that's, that's how you interact with vector databases. So what high value AI use cases is Cohere used for? So one of the um, most popular use cases is knowledge augmentation. Um, so for instance, when you have knowledge workers, oftentimes they have to conduct this really laborious research process, which can take weeks or months. They get a question that needs an answer. They need to read 100 documents to get an answer to that question. With knowledge assistance, what we can do is have the model do that for them. And so they can ask that question to the model. The model has access to the entirety of the internet. And now, thanks to vector databases and RAG, they can also have proprietary information, do that research for you, synthesize it, distill, summarize, and then come back with a verifiable answer. Wow. That's amazing stuff. But um, are there any challenges that organizations are seeing with generative AI? Definitely. So, you know, generative AI is amazing and the progress is staggering, uh, but there definitely are challenges. For instance, the major one that I'm sure a lot of you know about is hallucination. So these models can make up stuff. They can just dream up facts which aren't actually accurate. And that's a, that's a huge issue in terms of, you know, being able to trust and rely on the underlying technology. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that comes up a lot. And, you know, we talked a little bit about RAG. Tell us how RAG helps with that. Yeah, so RAG is the most promising solution to the issue of hallucinations. Uh, it gives you two different things. The first is reliability. So now, instead of just needing to take the language model's output on its word, what you can do is, because the model is going out, querying, pulling back documents, and using that as part of an answer, it can cite. It can cite exactly where it drew that information from. And so the humans can verify. They can trust this model. Um, the second major benefit is the fact that these models, when they're initially trained, they're trained on the open web. So they only know what's publicly available out on the internet. That's not really relevant for a lot of enterprises. You want to be able to leverage your internal IP, your own data and do that in a way that's completely secure. And so by, by being able to use RAG to sit these models down next to your internal databases, your data stores, what that model is now able to do is know everything that your organization knows. And that creates a much more useful user experience. Yeah, definitely. It's, 
I, I compare it to kind of cramming before a test. You get, all, you get the relevant information, and suddenly it's, it's fresh in your brain. Um, actually, I have another question for you, which is, what's the difference between training on all your documents versus using RAG? Like, why would you do one or the other? Yeah, so training is very good at changing the personality of the model, making the model speak in your brand voice, but it's not so great at adding knowledge. If you want to add knowledge and you want to keep it up to date on a daily, hourly, millisecond basis, you can't do that with training. You can't retrain every millisecond. But what you can do is you can update your databases every millisecond. And so this keeps your models fresh, always up to date, and you can constantly change their knowledge base. You can pull out things if you don't want it to know that. You can add new things in. And so the model is always up to date. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. And you know, in that house hunting model we talked about, if a new house comes on the market, boom, it's instantly available. If a house gets sold, you can take it off instantly. You don't have to retrain a model and wait you know, a week, a month or something for that to happen and spend millions of dollars on the exactly, training. Exactly. So yeah, that's, that's a big deal, which is why retrieval augmented generation is going to be a big deal for the, for the database world. So a, a super amount of cool stuff. It's very transformative. What are you looking at for the future? What's your next thing that you're going to do? Yeah, so there's a lot that's coming down the pipe, but the thing I'm most excited about today is the introduction of our new embeddings models. And so hopefully, as you can see on the screen, we've just introduced our latest embeddings, which frankly blow the competition out of the water, specifically on data sets that are more heterogeneous, that include multiple different sources of data. They might be a little bit noisy. In that case, we perform about twice as well as the competition. And it's not just accuracy, it's also speed, scalability, and efficiency. So during the training of this model, we specifically focused on being able to compress them. And we can do that 32-fold. And so compressing these models 32 times over preserves 96% uh, of the accuracy. Yeah. Super excited to have that in there. Yeah, that lowers the cost, gives totally. you faster results. Yeah. yeah and yeah. as we mentioned, you know, this is a world where people want results immediately. So you do the search, you want the result right now. You're not, you don't want it five minutes from now. You're driving around the town. You need the result right now. So that's very cool. And this, uh, the, uh, the uh, noisy data, maybe describe a little bit of what, what does it mean, noisy data? Yeah, so oftentimes your data sets aren't necessarily clean. They contain uh, perhaps different sources of knowledge coming in from you know, PDF scrapes, which have their own particular formatting errors from the scraping process, and also maybe some emails in there which look entirely different. With uh, search, uh, with embedding mechanisms of the past, those would be treated as quite separate. And so the results that you would get for a query would be missing parts of the information because they'd focus over here. What we've done as part of our training is bring that together, unify it, and so no matter how noisy or different the structure and formatting of these databases are, you're able to get extremely, extremely accurate results. No, so it's real world problems, solving real world problems, which we love. We love solving real world problems. So, hey, thanks for joining me. We're Thank really you. excited about our, our partnership with Cohere. Likewise. And we wish you great success. Thank you so much. <laughs>